Hey guys, what's up? In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the symmetry object and some known problems and issues that arise when using it. So let's create something here really quick to demonstrate some of the problems that you might come across when using the symmetry object. So I'm going to create a simple cube and I'm going to subdivide it once in the uh, X value here for the segments on X. That's going to split it right down the middle and I'm going to delete one half of it. Okay, so the symmetry object, what it does is it takes one half of an object and mirrors it over to the other. That way you only have to model one half of a symmetrical object and the symmetry object does the other half for you. Makes it a whole lot easier. However, there's some known problems. So let's create a symmetry object. And to complicate things further, let's create a hypernerve object as well. So the first mistake that a lot of people like to make is they like to keep the symmetry object as the main parent root object. That is a big no-no. Let's find out why. Let's take the hypernerve and drag that into the symmetry and then the cube into the hypernerve. Okay, now everything looks just fine. There's no problems, everything looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna make a couple of cuts here. I'm gonna go to the loop tool for the uh, loop mode here for the knife tool. I'm just gonna make a couple of cuts just so we can make this look more like a cube. Okay, so here is our cube, nice and rounded. The hypernerves is doing its job properly. And let's just say that we want to erase the front face. So we'll go to the cube, go to polygon mode, and I'm going to erase this entire front face of this cube. Okay, so we deleted that, and instantly you can see this little problem that arises here. And I hope you're able to see it. I'm gonna zoom into it. It's actually on the top and the bottom. But you'll notice here that we get this little problem. It's almost like a curtain, uh, like a curtain effect, if you want to call it that. And of course, it's up at the top as well. Let me change the shading here so you can see it. There you go. You can see we've got this little rip or tear, almost like a curtain effect going on there. And the reason for this is not because the points are not centered, because of course, if you were to take your points and you were to move them off center, you can see we get a ripping and a tearing effect. And the reason for that is because anytime you model in symmetry object, you always have to have points in the center. And it's always important to keep your symmetry object on center as well. That way the symmetry object is at world center and your object is also at world center as well. Now, of course, these points here in the front, we've got a couple of straight points. We can just hit optimize to clean those up. But you'll notice that these points here, if we go down to their X value, because that is the mirroring plane that we're using, those values are set to zero as well. So what in the world could be causing that little rip curtain effect going on there? Well, the answer is the execution order over in the object manager. And like I said earlier, a lot of people for some reason like to place the symmetry object first, followed by the hypernerves. Well, in this case, that's a very bad thing to do. You should always have the hypernerve object come first, followed by symmetry. So what we'll do is we'll drag this out, place the symmetry as a child of the hypernerve, then place the cube as a child of your symmetry object. And now we have a clean edge across the front all because of a simple execution order problem, which is now solved. Okay, so that's the first problem that has now been solved. The second problem arises when you start to make extrusions and inner extrusions along the axis plane that you're mirroring off of. So just to quickly demonstrate this, I'm going to close up the front I'm just going to 
create a polygon here across this front and then choose the knife tool and just bring these cuts back across the front. Okay, so let's just say that you want to make an extrusion here on the front. Well, that's not really a big deal. Let's turn everything back on, go back to polygon mode, and let's select this face here. Now, if we were to extrude this inward, instantly we get this really nasty looking mess here. And the reason for that is because when we extrude it inward, there was a newly generated polygon, this one here on the very inside, you can see it highlighted here. That one was generated when we created the extrusion. However, that polygon was extruded along the mirroring plane for the symmetry object, resulting in this unwanted problem now when we turn everything back on. So let me give you a little example here. I'm gonna create a plane, you don't have to do this part. Let's assume that this plane here represents the mirroring plane. This is how the symmetry object works. Everything on this side over here, the right side of this plane, is what you work with. This contains the polygons and the points of everything you're working with. Then over on the left hand side, this is what's being mirrored by the symmetry object. Well, if you create a polygon that takes up the same space as this plane, you're going to end up with this problem that now is occurring here right in the middle of our cube, which is this unwanted mess here. So the way to fix it is just to select it and delete it. And now when we turn things back on, now it's gone and there's no more of a problem. But what if we want to go further with this? What if we want to make an extrude inner and then perhaps maybe another extrusion inward? Now notice that when we extruded inward, there was a new polygon that was created here. And then when we extruded this piece back, another polygon was generated here. So let's see what happens when we turn these on. All right, well, that doesn't look too bad. Perhaps maybe you want those two holes there, but in this case, I don't want those two holes there. So what we need to do is delete these newly generated polygons. If we turn them on, you can see the ridge between the two holes is gone, but now we have a hole there. And the reason for that is because these points are not zeroed out because the Symmetry object is sitting at zero. So if we look at this from a front view, the symmetry object is sitting here at zero for the x value. But you'll notice that the points that we just extruded inward are sitting back here at a value of plus 10. So that's not going to work because those points need to be centered in order to be picked up to close the gap for the symmetry object. So in order to fix this, all you need to do is zero out these points. Now this is a little bit of a problem because you might be working on something where you're going to be making a lot of extrusions and a lot of inner extrusions and you're going to have to continually come back and delete those polygons and then center out all of those points. And you're going to have to do this over and over again depending on how many polygons you're generating along that axis plane. So I'm really hoping that perhaps in the future maybe in a future upgrade or release, Maxon will overhaul the symmetry object and just give us a brand new symmetry object that is fully dynamic, that will be fully aware of when and if we make extrusions or inner extrusions along the mirroring plane. So in the case of these points, in order to center them out, there's different ways you can do it. The first way is the old fashioned way otherwise known as the hard way. That is, select them manually and then zero them out. So in the case of these, they're all sitting at the same X value, so we can just select them, come down here to the X value, and zero them out. And now you can see they're all lined up. 
and we'll turn everything back on and there you go. But what if your points have random values? What if they're not all sitting in the same location as far as X goes? So I'm just going to move these around and give them some random values in the X value. Okay, now we need to select all of these points. So what I'm going to do is choose the rectangle selection. I'm going to make sure that only select visible elements is off. And I'm going to select these points. Now in this case, since all of these points do not contain the same X value, you'll notice that the axis handle is now in the approximate center of all of these points. So what it does is it takes the X value of all of these points and it determines this, the very center of all of their values. So it puts the axis handle directly in the middle of all of them. Well in this case, if we were to try to center them out this way, you'll notice that the axis handle is now centered. But the points are not all centered to zero. Matter of fact, none of them are actually sitting on zero. Only their approximate center was actually centered on zero. So of course this method now is no longer going to work for us. So now what we have to do is use the set point command. So I have mine docked over here in a palette, but if you don't have yours set up that way, you just need to go to mesh, commands, set point value. That's going to bring up the attributes for this tool. And it's very simple to comprehend. Basically, you have four different things that it's asking you here for. You have the choice to do all, which represents all three axes, or you can control each one manually. Now, in this case, we know that we're only moving points in the X value. So we only need to change X here from leave to set. And we know that we want all of these points set to a value of zero. So, of course, by default, the value automatically comes up as zero, which is what we want. We also have a coordinate system of object and world and screen. However, in this case, object is going to be just fine because we know that our object's center is directly at world center anyway, so object in this case will work. So now we can hit apply, and now all of our points have been centered out. Now let's just assume that you're going to go back and make a lot more extrusions, inner extrusions, you're going to be deleting polys, and you're going to find yourself continually coming back to this tool. Well, okay, that's not really a big deal. All you need to do is just select the points that you want to center, go back to the set point value command, and then just hit apply, and those points will be centered out. But what if we could create a custom script that all you have to do is click it once and all of your selected points will automatically be centered for you without even having to pull up the tool. So I'm sure some of you are already thinking, uh oh, he's getting into scripting. This is going to be way too hard. Well, don't worry about it. This is actually going to be fairly simple. We're actually going to be copying and pasting some code and then we're only going to type in one line of code. So the first thing we want to do is go up to script, script log. Now the script log is a history log of everything that you do and click on in the interface. So every time you click on a command or you delete something or you add something or you set a value for any tool, that will come up here in the script log and it will give you the script command for that particular tool. Now we also need to pull up the script manager. Script Manager is what you would use in order to edit code or create your own code. In this case, we want to create a new one. So what I want to do is go to File, New, and for the name, you can name this whatever you want. In this case, I already actually have this script already pre-made for myself, so I'm just going to type in Test. Also, be sure that you're on Coffee and not Python. Uh, this is a Coffee script, not a Python script. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is pull up the tool. So we'll go back over here to the set point value command. And now you can see that the call command for that tool has now come up in the script log. 
So now we want to set these values to where we want them so that when we click and execute the script, it will use the values that we've predetermined here. So of course we want to leave everything where it's at, but those values need to come up here in the script log so we can see what the script command for those values are. So we want to take the value of x and we want to click set again. You can see here that now we have the command for that value has come up. Now for the value we want to type in 0. Now I know 0 is already there but we want to type it in again just so we can see that value command come up in the script log. So we want to change this to 0 and then we just click off to the side and now you can see that value has now come up and now we can go to the coordinate system and we'll just choose object again now that value has come up here in the log as well but the problem is that if we were to click apply this apply command is not going to come up in the script log so in order to work around this we're going to have to type in the apply command for this tool so the first thing we want to do is we want to copy these last four lines of code here for the set point value command. So we'll highlight them, right click and choose copy, come over to line one in the script manager and choose paste. Then we're going to hit enter, that's going to take us down to line five. And we want to type in the following, call button. open parentheses, tool, open parentheses, close parentheses, comma, mdata, underscore, apply, close parentheses, semicolon. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of the script log. Let's take the script manager over to the side and let's select the points that we want to center. So I'm just going to grab these points here, which are the ones we want to center. And now for the script manager, let's hit execute and see what happens. And there we go. Now we know that this script is working properly and our points have now been zeroed out. So now since we have this script made, what we can do is go to file, save as, this is going to open up the scripts folder and you can actually just type in uh, your script here, whatever you want to do here, and then click Save. Okay, so once you actually have that saved, now this script should appear in your user scripts. So we can exit out of the script manager. And now we can go up here to Script, User Scripts, and now you can see that we have a couple of scripts here. Uh, one of them is the test that we just made. So in order to dock this into your toolbar, because I already have one set here, we need to open up the layout commands in order to drag the icon over into our palette. So we want to go to Window, Customization, Customize Commands, click on Edit Palettes, and you want to type in the name of your script. In this case, I believe ours was called Test. And there it is. Now you can just grab your Test icon and drag it anywhere in the interface that you want to. I already have one located up here at the top of my palette that's sitting over here by the object manager. Once you have it there, or wherever you want to place yours at, you can just uh, deselect Edit Palettes here. Then be sure to go to Window, Customization, Save Layout As, then you can save your layout as whatever you want. Then be sure to go to Window, Customization, Save as Startup Layout. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this tutorial on the symmetry object, on the execution order in order to solve the problem on the ends where we have the little curtain effect. And we've also got into a little bit of scripting here in order to create a really nice little script in order to zero out points instead of having to go back every time and pull up the set point value command. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.